Back in the start of the 21st century, plans were hatched to create a millennium green on the southern outskirts of the village of Sandford in Mid-Devon, around 10 miles from Exeter. With funding from the National Lottery and elsewhere, and support from local councillors and landowners, land was obtained to enable the creation of a community orchard, pond, wildflower meadow, green and much more. And a new footpath was created which linked the Millennium Green with the nearby town of Crediton. Volunteers helped to establish the circular herb garden and neighbouring medicinal forest garden. They were started around 2005. The herb garden was laid out with brick paths and a permaculture forest garden area was designed and planted up with perennials, shrubs and trees. Many plants were quickly established, but some found it difficult to survive due to local flooding, as both the herb and forest garden are quite near to a stream. And despite valiant efforts of volunteers, the herb and forest garden became somewhat overgrown over the years. In late 2020, some volunteers came together to start refurbishing the herb and forest garden. Our approach was to make the garden more sustainable as a resource for wildlife and an educational source of harvestable plants that could be used safely for culinary, health and other purposes. And we wanted to grow uh, in a permaculture way, drawing on principles to help retain and conserve the resources including benefiting the soil. Over the two years from 2021 to 2022, we've been meeting up about once a month to work on the Herb and Forest Garden with the guidance of Linda Lever, a founder of the Millennium Green, and Anne Stobart, a medical herbalist. But the paths around the circular herb garden were deteriorating and the bricks were becoming slippery and crumbling in the wet. So we agreed to let grass grow over the paths in order that they could be mown on a more regular basis. And over the several years, we worked at exposing the edges of the beds along those paths, but allowing a rich mixture of herbs to grow. Some plants around the garden had grown up as trees. So we also agreed to pollard and coppice a variety of the larger shrubs and trees to enable gaps and more light in the area, regrowing with young stems for harvestable bark. And there were some invasive plants spreading in the damper areas of the herb and forest garden. Some weeds can be welcome, such as nettle providing food for caterpillars and others for encouraging pollinators like bees. But other spreading plants, such as meadowsweet and montbretia, needed to be removed. And this will be an ongoing task. Further activities included building compost heaps and marking out forest garden beds with logs. And some new developments included a woodland path winding along the trees and stream nearby created with the logs from the pollarding and lined with wood chip, thanks to a local tree surgeon. The dampness of the area affected the plants that could be grown, so plants like lavender and sage wouldn't grow. So we set out to create a herb bank of raised earth and old logs, a kind of hugel culture bed to provide more drainage while retaining moisture. Some of the soil came from nearby, allowing us to also create a boggy area, especially for plants that were keener on damp soil, like gypsy wort. We've had a lot of positive feedback from local people. Many were glad to see the herb and forest garden area being tended more often. Through careful mowing, thanks to a local volunteer, the paths throughout the garden are now accessible. 
and our visits to the herb and forest garden have been accompanied by lots of biodiversity from fruit and seeds for birds to flowers for bees and other insects. There are more plants for us to harvest too. Oregano does well in the central raised bed and there are also beds of mint, tansy, comfrey, meadowsweet and more. The woodland path has provided an abundance of blackberries and the cornelian cherry and flowering quince are starting to fruit more reliably. We've begun to add more plants too, some more successfully than others. Digging over some herb beds has enabled sowing of additional plants from kale and rocket to marigolds. A greater diversity of growing conditions has enabled more plants to survive, such as light demanding plants like St John's wort and juniper. And we've made the area more accessible by creating a map of the herb and forest garden areas. This is useful to guide visitors around on a walkabout such as the well-being day in spring. So what are our plans? What comes next? Well, we're looking to extend plant variety further, particularly on the herb bank, and to establish more fruiting shrubs in the forest garden spaces. And we'll be labelling more of the plants so as to help visitors identify them. And we'll try to focus interest on a selection of plants to help get to know their uses in a safe way. And we might extend the seating area to allow more people just to sit and chat. <laughs> 